Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at one important part of redesigning a website, which is choosing a color palette that's appropriate for the client and for their brand. So for this scenario, we're gonna assume a client came to us with this beautiful website that you see right now, uh, and they want it to be more updated and modern for some reason. So our job then, either as a designer or a web developer that wears a couple of hats, is to extract some usable colors from this site. And I wanna show you a few tools and methods that I use to do that. So first tool we're gonna to look at is Colorzilla, which is a browser extension for Chrome and Firefox. And you can find it at colorzilla.com. And basically it gives you a color picker that you can use to pick colors from anything on your screen. Now, when you're picking a color to base your new design off of, it's important to have a conversation with a client about which color is their brand color, uh, what's the most important color to use, that kind of thing. So here we see there are a few different colors we could go with, uh, and some colors are harder to work with, but a lot of times clients have a color that they're attached to because it's part of their brand identity. And in this case, I would probably assume it's gonna be this terrible green up here. So we're going to go ahead and pick that and work off of that for the rest of this scenario. Now, once you have your primary color picked from the existing site that you're redesigning, you can take that over to Dribble. That's Dribble with three Bs. And you can search based on that color. So we can go down here to filters and we can drop in that color that we just copied off of that page. Get rid of the extra hashtag. And you can see examples of designs that use similar colors and kind of how those colors work together. Now you're gonna notice a lot of complementary colors being used like red, you know, goes with green, but that <laughs> looks like Christmas. Um, purple goes pretty well with green, uh, some blues, but the one I like the most is kind of this scheme here, which I don't believe that's black and we can check here and see what color that is. It's kind of a, yeah, that actually is completely black. So that's not the one I want. I want uh, this one here, which I think is not quite black. I think it's like a very, very dark blue. So we're gonna grab that because that should go well with our color. And even though the color may be a brand color, we might want to make some adjustments to it. Um, but we'll, we'll work with it in oxygen, actually. So once we have uh, an idea of the colors that will work together, usually one primary color, which we get from the existing site, and then a complementary color, which I just got from Dribble, then we need to go get shades of those colors. So for that, I like to use PALX, which is located at palx.jxnblk.com. And this is an automatic UI color palette generator. When you're working with colors, you usually want several shades of those colors. So this is a great way to get those. So I'm gonna jump up here and grab our primary color and drop it in. And this will generate several shades of that color right here on the teal row. And it also generates other options. Uh, if you want to use this to get certain complementary colors and things, that's fine, but you really need to know which colors work well together in order to do that effectively. And me, I am not a professional designer, so I'm not gonna go down that route personally, but this teal row is gonna give us our shades of green. Then if we wanna grab shades uh, of this color, which would be a great one to base our grays off of, we can drop this in and get the same. So here in the blue area, we get a really nice collection of saturated grays. So these have that slight blue tint, but they're very light on the blue color. So this would be a great option for our almost white and our grays. So let's start moving some of these into oxygen. So I have a blank oxygen site here where I've imported some pieces from our atomic design set. So let's go to manage settings. And global colors, we're gonna ignore the atomic colors for now because we wanna add our own. So let's first start with this not quite white here. And let's add that in and we'll call it uh, gray 
one. I usually just label my grays one through nine or however many shades I have to keep it simple and easy to recognize the colors. And I'm gonna grab this gray two, paste that in. And again, you want several shades uh, to work with uh, from very light to very dark. So we're gonna grab two more here and then we can use those throughout our site. Now again, if you're not a professional designer, then keep it fairly limited, but still give yourself some options so that you don't end up just using one or two colors throughout the whole site because that can start to look a little samey. So let's jump over here and drop in this last gray. Gray four. Perfect. So now we have a nice little palette of saturated grays, which should look really good with our uh, primary color. So let's also add in our secondary color here. And this one I will name secondary uh, because we know what it's going to be. And that's uh, this one here and paste that in. And that's going to be very, very dark. That'll go over top of uh, very green elements. So now we can go back and grab our primary color in all its shades. So let's just do that again here on Palks. Paste it in and we'll use this teal row. We'll grab uh, maybe this one here. Actually, I like this one a little bit better. And we'll add this in. We'll call it primary one. And let's just grab three of these. Um, and actually, I don't like the darker ones at all, so I'm just gonna grab this one, I think, and keep that handy. So I'll go ahead and just drop this into the global colors so that we can use it easily. And there we go. So now that we have our colors loaded in, we can either replace the colors already used in our design, or we can just simplify it a little bit and apply them. So we're gonna get rid of a couple of these elements and just work with one section here. And for this section, I think we should go with a background color of uh, one of our primary colors, either the lighter or the darker one. I think the lighter one looks better. Now this, again, is not exactly the brand color from the client's site. So you have to be mindful of that. Sometimes they're gonna want that exact same color and then you just have to deal with it, unfortunately. Um, so let's just choose that as our background and then let's pick some of our other colors that we've set up. Uh, probably this really dark blue looks good on it like we found on Dribble. Uh, that's just gonna complement it really, really well. And so it's really as simple as that. I mean, you don't have to overcomplicate things. You can keep it nice and simple and you can see even our uh, darker saturated grays look pretty good on this and we can go with a darker green if we wanted. Don't like that. So probably this blue is the safest bet. But assuming everything doesn't have a pure green background, you have a few colors to play with. So let's change this border color to the dark blue and then typography to the dark blue as well. Perfect. So now you can see we have a pretty decent looking set of colors. Let's add a shape divider here, change the height to 120, and then let's use uh, one of these as a transition color to go into another section. And we'll just add a section here below. Let's do this um, icon block. That should be pretty well suited for the next section on this uh, particular layout. And for this one, we'll go with another full color background, but we'll go with this uh, saturated gray. And then we can kind of flip flop things and probably throw this green on top of it. And we can do the, the darker green maybe on this one. Let's drop that in here and see what that looks like. So again, these colors, we can also go with our whites that we uh, had set up or our lighter grays on this background. Uh, we have a few different options with this palette that we set up. That one's probably gonna be too dark, um, but if we stick with our greens on top of this, it's gonna look pretty nice. And let's do a darker green for that, and then a lighter green for these down here. And then for, actually this one needs to be the lighter green as well, I think. And then for this one, we will go with a border color of dark green, and then a typography color of the darker green as well. So there we have some colors taken from the client site and quickly applied 
to the redesigned version of their site. Now, obviously, this is a very basic example, but those tools, Colorzilla, Dribble, in the way that we used it to search for the root color of our design, and Palks are going to make things way easier for you when trying to determine a color palette based off of an existing design. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and those are some of the tools and methods I like to use to extract usable colors from an existing design during a redesign project. Thank you very much for watching.